He's outraged. He's outraged. You're a rich girl, but you're not too far. Cause you know it don't matter anyway. You can rely on the old man, buddy. You can rely on Steve's money. Nice try. Don't you. <laughs> I got people to worry about. I want these. Really good tailgate. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> it's actually not in the morning at all. It's like 1 p.m. I'm Monday. I just don't feel like leaving bed today. So I'm just going to work right here all day. That's it. <laughs> Hey YouTube, I've basically filmed nothing up to this point for this week. It's Wednesday afternoon, 3.30. I gotta hop on a call in about 10, 15 minutes. This weekend, I'm gonna put you on the tripod. My flexible tripod broke again, so the company sent me a new one for the second time. Let me throw you on here right quick. This weekend was, uh, went out for my friend's birthday on Saturday night into Hoboken, party, dance. It was a good time. Happy birthday, Nicolette. I don't think my friends even watch these videos, but if they do, then happy birthday. I never really post videos or stuff about my weekends. Very inappropriate. I feel like YouTube would like kick me off if I ever did. But you can go follow my Snapchat or my Instagram stories, whatever. All that social media stuff is linked in the description below any of my videos. So you can go follow me there. So we signed that new client to a six month deal, re-upped the deal for my partnership with the Fantasy Jocks. I had a call this morning onboarding myself to that freelance freelance company, if you want to call it. Like I'll be doing tasks for them. And I'm actually really excited about it. Basically I get onboarded to them. I sign on as an independent contractor. Then you have to add the types of skills that you can perform for their clients. So for me, it'd be like paid traffic through Facebook, Instagram. And I'm probably going to see if I can get other added skills such as video editing or, you know, blogging and that kind of stuff added on. And since I'm like a specialist, I get paid pretty good money. So I guess I could just get into this. So they, they would pay me $50 an hour working on that kind of stuff, which I normally don't work when I'm working with my specific clients. And you're allowed to, when I sign on with them as an independent contractor, you could still definitely take clients on your own on the side, but you can't take, if you're working with a client with a freelance company, you can't like leave that company and take the clients with you. It's in the no uh, compete clause that you have to sign. Normally I work on a month to month fee. If I'm working with one of my clients, right? You could pay for a month to month. You could pay for three months in advance or six months in advance. The longer you sign on for, the less money it's gonna be on a month to month basis. And I also charge a percentage of ad spend. So the company basically pays me. They're paying me for knowing how to use the Facebook platform and knowing how to market through there. Then they also have to pay Facebook you know, however much they actually want to use goes towards marketing. Then they pay me a percentage of that ad spend. So they'll pay me say amount X, like a thousand dollars a month. That's my fee. Then they could choose to put in maybe $500 towards marketing for the month, right? And then I have a fee based on however much they put into that. So if it's like zero to a thousand dollars, it's 3% of the spend. If it's a thousand to 2,500, it's 5% of the spend. If it's 25 to 5,000, it's 8%, something like that. Because obviously the more money they put into marketing, the more money that they're putting into the platform, the more I have to work, right? The more campaigns I'm running, the more testing I'm doing because it's it's more money to be used in, in a bunch of different ways. That's kind of how I work on a pay for, but with this freelance company, I'll be working on an hourly pay scale and, and you like record everything and you track everything that you're doing work-wise. So that's how they know whether or not, you know, you're working and if your time accounted for is correct. So it's just, it's another really good way for me to get income. And again, like, I know I have this like BGE media, but it's not, I'm not like a limited liability corporation. I'm not an LLC. My whole thing is not about building a company. I'm not like trying to build a fortune 500 company or build a huge marketing agency. I'm basically just like reverse engineering what I want as a, like a lifestyle, right? Like I want to be able to afford to live on my own. I value freedom. I value time. I value flexibility. So I'm kind of like, how do I get there? What skills am I good at that can financially get me to a spot where I am, you know, flexible and I can support myself. And that's kind of what I'm doing. Like this whole journey following me is more about me building my lifestyle and me, you know, freelancing and getting there and being resourceful and, and trying to maneuver my way around it. So this whole YouTube and this fantasy football and me vlogging everything is like my side hustle. The marketing portion is what I do financially to allow me the freedom and flexibility to do the side hustle, if that makes sense. So, you know, they're like simultaneous, they build off of each other, but in today's day and age, like the way you build a business is 
is the same way you build a personal brand, right? They're, they're simultaneous. Because as one grows, like even though I might have 5,000 people watch a fantasy football video and only 500 people watch my vlogs, as that number grows, so will that. That's really where I'm differentiating myself in, in this market is because when you look at fantasy football, it's another way of me reverse engineering it. You know, like how can I build a big following? How can I build a big audience? And I said, you know what? I know a lot about fantasy football. Let me let me get into that space. And then furthermore, it's like, okay, well, that's super saturated. What's a, what's an approach that I could kind of hit the market? And this is just like business savvy. This is just being savvy in this sense. I realized that YouTube is a place where not a lot of people have really attacked, right? When, when it's fantasy football, it's all blog posts, it's all these websites, it's all podcasts and things like that. I hit YouTube where there's only like three, two, three, four big name players in the YouTube space. And I'm like, I can not, I appeal to the younger audience, right? Like I get, I appeal to people who are like my age and younger. And that's what like a lot of the people in fantasy football are like 35, 40, 45. They're just like these old boring ass dudes that kind of sit there, talk to you about numbers and analytics. And I feel like I put more of a personal touch onto my videos. The way I do, you know, videos are a good way to like interact and kind of gain the trust of your audience. And that's kind of where I'm at. That's what I'm doing. So I figured out what's a market I can, I'm knowledgeable about and I can build an audience around fantasy football. Where's the best place to attack it? I figured out through YouTube. And then like my passion is just doing these vlogs and, and freelancing and building a business and building my lifestyle. So event that's kind of like the end game is being able to financially support myself while doing my, my passions, I guess. That should be everyone's real end goal when you're talking about lifestyle, when you're talking about what you want out of life, right? It's only, it's only to be happy, of course, but like, what is it, what's your end goal? Like, where do you wanna be in five, 10 years? Like, what really is it? Like, be truthful with yourself. Is it, do you really want, are you okay working a nine to five, Monday to Friday, so you can have a really good time on the weekends? You want a family, you want kids, you wanna be able to afford nice cars, nice nice houses, like, and you can't, you can't let other people's thoughts and other people's visions of what they want affect what you want, because what I want is gonna be a billion times different than what you want. You just really have to be honest with yourself, figure out what it is you want, and then reverse engineer it through your skills, through your education, through your, through whatever you're doing, really, through your experiences. And that's another topic I, I don't really touch on in terms of like college and, and education and things. Like I, uh, someone, I was doing a live stream on YouTube on Sunday before the kickoffs on the games, which I had a fucking blast doing, by the way. I'm gonna be doing that every Sunday morning before kickoff. There's my alarm because I got a call in seven minutes that I got to hop on. Um, I, I, you know, people ask a lot, like, is college, people don't ask me, but, you know, the, this question is thrown around a lot and I have a, a pretty strong opinion on it. Is college worth it? Should I go to college? Do I go to college? Like, I got my undergrad degree from Marist College. It's in Poughkeepsie, New York. It was for concentration in international business. I have my MBA in marketing analytics. So I've been, you know, I've, I've done my schooling. I've earned my degrees. Thank God I'll never be back in the classroom again. <laughs> and that's also so situational to you. I think that's like a topic that's really coming from like where I'm from, like the most typical suburban town in America, right? It's like 95% white people, middle to upper class. And that's probably a huge portion of my audience, at least the younger kids. I'm sure you're all in probably the same kind of town suburban area, right? When you're in a town like that, your expectation is to go to high school, do well, then go to a four-year college, grad, uh, four-year undergrad program, whether you live there or commute there, and then get a job, right? That you work nine to five, Monday to Friday. What I'm trying to do is show you that you don't necessarily need to do that, right? There's so many other ways that you can build a life and build what you want to do. It's really hard for, I guess like the education system is kind of fucked up in this sense, is that they make you choose like a major at the age of like 17, 18, when you're entering college, right? And if you don't choose it by like sophomore year, then you're already like 30 credits behind and you have to take an extra year, which costs an extra $30,000. It's really fucked up how this whole cycle really is right now. But what I would say is like, is college necessary? Absolutely not. You definitely don't need to go to college. Anything I'm doing right now, I did not need to go to college to learn how to do. I would say that the path though through that, like college, I would say undergrad is more about learning about yourself, like kind of like who you are as a person, like you grow up a lot because you're thrown into a bubble where you kind of have to provide for yourself and care for yourself. For the most part, not financially wise, a lot of people are taking care from their parents or whoever. But I think um, going to college is definitely not something you need. I think it prepares you more from like an organizational standpoint. Personality characteristics is is where you kind of hone in on those skills, right? Being on time, being organized, making sure you get all your work done, and those th those things translate into into like real life skills eventually. The problem comes with when you're so young when you enter college that you don't know what you want like out of life or what you want to do, right? 
and when you when you get thrown into like business, right? You're gonna you're gonna major in business. There's so many different avenues that you can learn about, right? And you could figure out, but college in a sense, I would say is most worth it if you know what you want to do. Like if you have a specialization, if it's something you can learn, right? Like if you wanna be a doctor or a lawyer, a statistician, a dietitian, if you want you know, something that you you can absolutely learn through a textbook that you could learn through solving problems and things like that, like very concrete black and white kind of shit. School is great for that. If you're like, if you have, if you're like me and you kind of have an entrepreneurial mindset, right? The only way you learn about this stuff is through experience. You could sit in an entrepreneur class all day. You could read a textbook, but you're not going to learn shit until you go out there and do stuff. And that's very much the case for a lot of jobs and a lot of the times it sucks because the only way you get to a certain job is if you get your foot in the door the only way you get your foot in the door is if you have that piece of paper that college degree so what i would say is like just become more resourceful right figure out where you want to be what you want if it's a certain job that you want to have find out the qualifications for it if they say you know you need an undergrad degree then yeah you're gonna have to go to school for it but a lot of the jobs like if you're if your goal is to be a freelancer and your goal is to work from home there are plenty of websites i've mentioned this tons of time on my on my channel upwork.com is like a freelancer's haven right there you can find any job whatever you want to do there's people hiring looking for other people to do their job. And if you don't know how to do a certain job, if you wanna be a blogger, if you wanna be a Facebook marketing manager, if you wanna do video editing, if you wanna do graphic design, you have the internet, you know what I mean? Like you have the internet, you can go out there and learn anything you want for free on the internet. I can guarantee you that. Be resourceful and you'll be able to find what you're looking for. And I think it just comes down to like, whether or not you're lazy. If you're gonna be lazy, you're not gonna really accomplish anything in life that's not silver spoon fed to you. And that's the case for a lot of people, again, in my, where I come from, a lot of the suburban middle class, upper class, they've been spoon fed most of their lives, their entire lives, showing where to go, what path to take, where they're supposed to go from here. And then when you hit like my age where you're 23, 24, 25, and you realize like, shit, I wish I knew what I wanted to do, or I wish I had an idea back in the, the good thing is that if you're my age, you have so much time left still to, to go about that path and, and figure things out and learn. Like even if you need to stay up an extra five hours a night, right? From when you get home from work at like five o'clock, from six to 10 o'clock, like, what are you doing? You could be learning something. If you want to learn how to code websites, there's a ton of money in that. So, you know, after your job, take two, three months. It's all you got to do. Commit two, three months that every day after work, you, you work for three to four hours, learn that skill, and then you can translate it into money because there's always people looking for that stuff. <sighs> wow, that was a long run. I'm sorry. I got to get on this call. I'll check back with you guys later. So anyways, what I was saying about college yesterday, I think college can be great if you use it correctly. I don't think it's a black or white situation where it's like, Everyone should go to college, everyone shouldn't. If you have a specific skill you wanna learn, a specific industry or something that you wanna get into, and you know that you'll learn a lot through that, or there's a specific program that you're gonna that you're gonna utilize at a college, and yeah, absolutely, college is a good idea. But on the other hand, yeah, like loans are very realistic. There's a ton of people in debt paying back loans for the next like, 10 years coming out of college, and the way that you know we're set up today with the internet and just having so much free access to so much, and you can really learn anything you want if you put the time and the work into it. That you don't necessarily need college. So I'm not telling anyone to go to college. I'm not telling anyone to skip college but it's all very personal going back would i do it would i do college again um yeah definitely would i would probably go back and do something other than like i majored in international business completely irrelevant to anything i've done up to this point in my life and i think that's probably true for 90 percent of people but when you go into a general category like business it leaves you open for a lot of opportunities my path was majored in business i got a job as like an account manager which is a very typical entry-level job eventually got into the marketing field as like a media buyer which usually takes some experience in the business world at entry level so that's how i got into that and then from there, like the company I was doing the media buying at, which is a very entry level marketing position, they were bought out and they restructured the, the company and they started utilizing more uh, social media for their clients and the campaigns that they're running for their clients. And they kind of asked me, they had never done Facebook before. They asked me if I wanted to kind of like head the Facebook team, I guess, but they had never done it. I had never done it. So I was just kind of jumping in feet first. And I was like, yeah, I definitely think this is where like the future is. And I think it's something like a very good skill to learn. So I started doing that. And then when I moved into the city to the marketing agency in New York, I was running the paid social media campaigns for these bigger companies. I eventually realized that I could do this on my own. There's a lot of opportunity. So it's not something that I needed to go to school for. Nothing about the social media advertising I learned in school. But had I not gone to school and gotten these other jobs along the way, you know, like 
I wouldn't have been able to get the first job without a degree and you know and, and, and it goes on and on and on things like that but I think it really comes down to knowing what you want as a person and kind of reverse engineering how to get there what steps you need to take to get there so I'm about to hit the gym I got uh, the week two fantasy football video uploading right now I basically do a blog post every Tuesday gonna get a video out every Thursday a podcast every Thursday night a live stream every Sunday morning. So that's why I'm in season content. And then on top of, you know, obviously I have to work my marketing stuff. So I'm gonna go to the gym and then go to Starbucks to work on some of the marketing campaigns for probably the next five or six hours. And that'll be the day. And that'll actually wrap up this episode. I think we got Thursday night football later tonight. So it'll be a good night, but that'll be all for this week. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you scroll down a little bit, give it the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Always, I'll be back next Saturday following my vlog of building up BD. GE.